Hello there, beautiful friends from around the world and in every country. I'm Black and Fist. Now I know I'm a little late to talk about this death battle. It already happened, like almost like uh, pretty much almost a week, last week or a week ago. But even though I'm late, I still want to give my own thoughts on it. Um, I was a little hesitant to make it. That's why I'm late. But regardless, these are my thoughts. Now. This is going to be mostly the things I disagreed with that video and its analysis. But before I even begin to talk about what I disagree, I'm going to have to say right off the bat that the conclusion that they came with, Superman winning, I think it was the right one. Even though I'm a Dragon Ball fan and even though I do think that they had some problems with their like, statistics, I do think that they came to the right decision to have Superman win. But regardless, I'm a Dragon Ball fan and I paid close attention to what they said about Goku. And, of, and I saw little holes in there. I'm pretty sure maybe a Superman fan who was as deep into Superman as I am to Dragon Ball might have found some flaws with the Superman analysis as well. But I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know much about Superman. Regardless, this is what I disagreed with. Now... The first thing that I absolutely disagreed with was the removal of power scaling. And this is an argument that's been used a lot. Now, I can understand with the getting rid of power levels. Now, if you really think about it, power levels are only just a numeric or at least a, li a literal interpretation of power scaling it's just a type of power scaling power levels is just a type of power scaling. if you don't want to use power levels that's fine but i don't agree with you getting rid of with power scaling and this is why now in dragon ball and i would say a pretty numberable you know pretty other shonen mangas not just dragon ball have power scaling as a running theme in Dragon Ball, before power levels were introduced, power scaling was there, and after power levels were gone, power scaling was still there. What do you? What am I talking about? Power scaling is all that stuff where this character beats this character, so he becomes a bigger threat. the the The, the enemy from the last arc gets pushed aside to show how powerful a new villain is. This is a theme that runs throughout. The entire Dragon Ball series, even even before power levels were introduced and after, I can understand you not using power levels in, because you do you think you're they're unreliable. Well, that's fine, but you cannot get rid of the whole power scaling theme to Dragon Ball because that's a part of the series. It's it's been established that that's been a part of the series that lesser feats by lesser characters do and can be done by higher feats. That's just Dragon Ball logic there. That's been shown in the series. However, I do understand the power scaling has been taken to a big, a huge over exaggeration. And I understand that, you know, you didn't want to do that, obviously, because some people take power scaling to ridiculous levels, okay, to make, just pump up the characters that they want to pump up. However, completely removing power scaling, I think, is not the right way to go with that. You have to, you have to have, you have to use it, it in terms of the context of the show or the manga. That's how you use power scaling. I understand that they didn't want to use it because they thought it was just pumping up characters that, I guess, fans wanted to see more powerful. But I do think that was the wrong way to go because even though power scaling was being used that way, it was being pumped up to ridiculous levels. You can't, you still can't remove the power scaling out of Dragon Ball, it's in there. But regardless of that, let's go to the other feats. Now, the other feats that I definitely disagreed with was the statistics they gave with Goku. Now, the one thing I definitely disagreed with was the biggest statistic that they disagreed with is when they calculated Goku's key output. Now, the way they calculated Goku's key output, I think that this was very lazy of them. 
very, very lazy. They essentially just said durability equals Goku's key output. And their reasoning was behind this is that the key some is uh, every time Goku uses key, uh, unless he doesn't want to, it has some force against him. And okay, that's reasonable. But you cannot honestly say, take Goku's durability, which I also think is inaccurate. And whatever Goku's durability is, and then equate it to Goku's key output. Because then you're going into grounds that is just ridiculous. Because in the series, we have seen that Goku can do shoot a key blast and hurt someone much more than they would just punching and kicking them physically. So that doesn't make sense. If if durability equals Goku's key output, that would mean that every time Goku would punch, kick, whatever, is equal to every time Goku shoots a key blast at him, which is not true. In the series, this has been, even though it's not been explicitly said, in the series, it has been common knowledge that any character, not just Goku, can shoot a key blast and it'll hit you much harder than they can punch and kick. Okay? Also, if this is true, it makes the Dragon Fist technique completely worthless. Because all it is is a punch with key. But considering the fact that a punch is already equal to key, just how they said those are equated to each other, then it's point, per, pointless to have key in it. You just can punch them and you'll get the same result. Obviously, that's not the case because the key obviously makes the other person that Goku's attacking or at least makes the blow a lot more powerful than what he can already do with his own body. Whatever. That's regardless. Now, the other stuff that I thought was a little bit... Now, this was a little bit more shaky, I think. The durability. Now, they calculate... Now, I thought this was a very impressive way to calculate Goku's durability. However, I think there is some flaws in this. They calculated Goku's durability to that of uh, a bomb, essentially, that was made to buy Dr. Zero. Now, the thing is, the bomb essentially claims that it can destroy Goku, okay? And they also claim that it can destroy the planet. The only problem with this is if you remember, Dr. Giro's whole, whole purpose after Goku destroyed the Red Ribbon Army was to kill Goku, right? Now, the way he found out how to do this was creating the Genes Onegin or androids is in, in English dub. Regardless, he created the cyborgs, uh, 17 and 18, to kill Goku. That tells me that he was not confident in the bomb to kill Goku. Because his whole purpose was to kill Goku. If he wanted to kill Goku, and he did, that's the whole purpose of behind 17, 18, and to a little extent Cell, he wouldn't have created them. Because if the bomb could kill Goku, all he would have done was detonate the bomb. Obviously, he didn't because... Either he knew that it couldn't destroy Goku, and that's why he developed the higher things to kill him. Now, that's, the, that's the, I think, the biggest flaw there. Regardless, I understand they, it's very hard to calculate Goku's durability. I think that even though it's a lot more vague, uh, the explosion that Cell gave off when he destroyed King, Kai, uh, King Kai's planet and King Kai himself... That explosion was definitive proof of how much Goku can handle because he actually died in that explosion. That explosion could, uh, if you could, but see, you, you don't really don't know how powerful that blast was. So we don't know. And I understand that. Regardless, I do think the way they calculated Goku's durability was off. Next up, speed. Now, a lot of people say the speed's off too. I... First of all, in oh, in, ter in terms of speed, I also have to talk about the instant transmission because there's been a lot of mistakes and mistakes, and even in the video there has been some half truths about instant transmission. Obviously, it's not instant transmission doesn't go at the speed of light; it's instant, instantaneous. 
The only problem is that and the biggest problem here is that people are starting to say Goku cannot use this in a fight. He needs to concentrate and he needs to focus. True, he does when he's going vast distances or to other dimensions. He needs to concentrate and focus. But when he is up close and it's been shown in the manga and the show that he can use instant transmission in the middle of a fight, okay? The most famous version, and no, he does not need to put his hands up like this. He can do it without it. He only puts his hands like this when he's concentrating and focusing to go to a very far away place or another dimension. You under, okay? So that's another flaw there. Yes, he can use it in a fight. So regardless of how fast Superman is, Goku, I think, will always be faster. All right? Now, I do. Now the other thing I have to say about it is this one I can't really blame them on but it's the strength now the strength is obviously way too low for Goku but I can't blame them for that because they have that uh, part where Goku's lifting the 40 tons the only, I, I always you know even before this death battle honestly before the death battle I always had a problem with that scene because Goku's feats up until then have been and by the way and by the way, and here's another thing on what I don't understand too is that when they're equating his durability to key power that would also kind of mean that his key power is too overpowered because he if he can only lift uh, 160 tons right or he can only punch with 160 tons yet it's supposed to equate to like what they gave him like into the six tillions of tons that doesn't make any sense I'm sorry I'm, I'm being too rambly here but regardless I think that the strength was way too low I can't really blame him for that but uh, the only reason I say is because when I, you see the manga or you see the series there are some things where you see Goku doing a couple tons work of feats and to see Goku at base form, not doing 40 tons, barely ab even able to do it, it kind of just threw me off. Like, what? What? That doesn't make sense. Now, there's been an argument that, okay, the gravity in the other world or wherever Goku was was actually higher. I don't even know if that's true. I have been one of the very little things I don't know. Well, I'll have to research that. But it doesn't really matter anyway because I still think the strength was a little low. But uh, regardless of all that, it was a good video. Um, as I said before, I agree with the outcome. Um, the only way that Goku could have beat Superman was if he teleported, if he instant transmissioned him to a red sun. And here's another thing, and this is the last thing, by the way. I know this is a long video. People are saying that Goku would have no way of finding out uh, of that uh, the that Superman's power comes from the sun. I think that's bogus. Su Goku is a genius at this stuff, and I'm pretty sure he can sense it. Okay, he's not stupid in terms of fighting. Okay, now one of the biggest things I always just scratched my head in the video was when they said Goku cannot even if he find if even if Goku finds out that the uh, Superman gets his power from the Sun he can still tra teleport him to a blue star which it just got me scratching my head wait a minute that's bogus because if Goku already knows that Superman gets his power from the Sun Right, and he already knows that he needs a red sun. It, it, he, Superman's vulnerable in a red sun. How is he? How is he going to teleport him to a blue star? He can concentrate and focus. And by the way, the heat of a blue star is different from a red star. He, he could probably tell them apart. So I don't understand this argument that he could accidentally teleport him to a blue star. No, if Goku already had this knowledge, if he already had the knowledge of if he figured out red star is Superman's weakness, and if he had the chance to teleport him to a red star, 
he would probably teleport him to a red star. Okay, I think that that was just complete bull that they said, oh, he might trans teleport him to a blue star. No, Goku can sense these things. Okay, so I think that was complete bogus. Regardless, I, that's the only way Goku could win is if he t teleports him to a red star. That's the only way I think I see Goku winning. Um, but uh, regardless of any of this, it was a great video. I think that even though they kind of had some missteps, overall, they did a great job uh, researching this, even though I kind of disagreed with them. It doesn't... It, even if I disagreed with them, it, they, I admire their attempt because they did do some really cool things and some really creative things to, to try to calculate Goku. I just think that it it was an admirable attempt i just don't think it was the right it was right all right i just don't think it was right but regardless they still came to the right conclusion all right i still in a fair fight superman would win the only way goku would be able to win is if he teleports him to a red star all right i've been talking for too long all right guys um and this video is getting way too long all right i I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it wasn't too rambly. I know I mumbled blah, blah, blah too much, but I'm Black and Fist, and I'm out, man.